I'm going to show you one of the ways we like to start dogs uh, with scent. We first start actually with only food and when they're motivated to go to white boxes or to just search for that food, we then pair it with scent. So what I've ta done is I've taken a box, I've cut a hole in it, and I've cut a hole in it. I've taped scent on Q-tips to the top of the box. And that's so that the scent is close to the hole, so it'll waft out very easily. And I can also then put food in the box and close this. And then the handler can also open up the box and put food in the box. And we don't have to worry about them, oh, I don't know, eating Q-tips, <laughs> which is a good thing. And then I'm going to take this box and I'm going to put it down. Nose in the hole. Great. I'm going to open the box and she ate all the food, so I just put more in. Good girl. Okay. Why do we have a hole in the box when we're having so much trouble getting our dog's noses out of the hole, you might say? <laughs> lie down. All the way, lie down. Good girl. That is because with this is an experienced dog. And so she says, I can put my nose in that hole and try to get that food. With a novice dog, a dog that's never done this before, they're just going to be around the hole. And then they might stick their nose in the hole, but they'll probably then take their nose out and look up at their handler. And that gives the handler a chance that Midge and I didn't have <laughs> to open that box and say, yeah, this is great. So, with advanced dogs, <laughs> it doesn't work as well, but with a novice dog, it works great. The other thing we do is something very similar, where we have a hole like this. And why would we do this? Because we can then take this, we can put the box on its side, and then we have a hole low to the ground going this way, and we can put the box on end, and we have a higher hole. And the scent for this is right below, taped right below this hole. You just can't see it, but the dog can smell it. And then when we, we can also put food in here, but they really can't reach it. Some dogs with narrower noses can reach the food in the slotted box. So I would do this, and my dog does, see how she's just holding it there? Okay, good because now what we get is an alert that gives an actual hold, a duration. Because when you don't know where it is, you don't want them just sticking their nose everywhere and then looking at you saying, here, here. You want to know for sure that they're at the scent. And so when that happens, you'd like them to hold their nose in that place. So we go from that with the rectangular hole to this round hole. Good girl. Watch her eyes. Okay. And so and she's waiting for me to give her that release. Think about your bomb uh, detection dogs. They can't make a mistake. They can't say, oh, no bomb here, and walk out. They have to have an excellent alert. They have to be able to say, this is where the bomb is. This is where the fire accelerant is. This is where the drugs are. And not just sort of, in ge this general vicinity, guys, you know, go for it. I know it's here. I'm telling you it's here. So you want a dog that goes to the source of the scent and holds some kind of position. It is not important what that position is in the sport of scent work or nose work. If it's a bomb detection dog, it's important. You don't want the dog touching it. So they might lie down. They might sit. There are things that they might do. They might bark, but they're not going to paw it. They're not going to put any part of their body on it for obvious reasons. And if you're um, a traffic stop and you're a state trooper, you want to be able to indicate what your dog has found because the trooper is going to indicate where the dog should search because when you're in court, 
you have to be able to prove that your dog actually searched that. Whereas we know the dog could walk by that and indicate, but in court, that's not going to hold up. So there you want a dog that's following a direction and then freezing when they find the drugs or saying, there's something in this car. I don't know quite where it is, but there's something there. And then they'll go and search the car. So it's a whole different thing. This is a sport and it's not life or death. And so we will get things such as a paw touch, a freeze with a stare, a nose touch, a chin rest, a bow. We'll get a lot of different things and people can choose what their dog likes to do and does best. Okay. The last thing is a colander. And this is so that we can tape the scent underneath it, set it down, and the scent will waft up through all of these holes. And this will help get duration and the dog will learn that we'll drop treats in here every time their nose goes in and then they tend to say, well, it's a waste of energy for me to take my nose out of this. So what if I hold my nose in here? Is another treat going to come? And sure enough, it does. And you start getting duration. They put their nose in, in here and they hold it. Okay. And that's because she's been taught that if she does that, a treat's going to come in. She takes her nose out, nothing happens. She puts her nose in, another treat goes in. She takes her nose out, and she says, oh, that's not fun. Good girl. Yes. And one of the reasons she's not holding it is because when I was just showing you, I didn't put scent under here. So she, there isn't any scent for her, but she knows the behavior. Okay, good girl.